is going to be a little different video. It's going to run long. And that's because someone very uh, close to me, very near and dear to me, um, has passed away just recently. And I'd like to go over a little bit of um, my life, having that person uh, share that with me and have myself share his life. And it was great to be part of that. And just a little bit of the story um, to go back. And if you don't want to listen to this, that's fine. But I just want to get this out there. And I, I think I, I've got some lessons that I've taken from this person. I, they're, they're invaluable. And I'd like to share that too with some people and to get people thinking. So anyways, um, I'm just going to go forward and I got some notes. So I'm going to be looking down and just make sure I'm hitting all the the points that I want to hit and that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to make this through this. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Um, so we first met in first grade in uh, 1982. We became a best friend soon after. I mean, it was almost instantaneously. We just met in class. I remember he, he was a new kid and uh, we just sort of like, we'd always been with friends. It felt like that. We just, boom, hopped to it and, and we, we became best friends right away, like I had said. And with that, uh, we both lived in a trailer court or mobile home park or whatever you want to call that. And he was um, right around, uh, like down a couple blocks in that, that court, in that trailer park in another trailer home from where I was. And because of that, uh, we saw each other every day. We'd play, play together every day. I mean, it would be uh, before school, after school. Uh, we rode the bus together to it, to school and from school. And um, it was so bad, uh, not bad. We were so close and, and our, our just, our goings on, our mischievousness, or what do you want to call it, our boy, boyhood, uh, that we had got assigned seating on the, the bus uh, pretty, pretty soon after we started playing together and getting together. Um, we roughhoused, and on the bus, we didn't just ride the bus, we roughhoused. And we played around like Andy and I always had done that. Um, so because of that, we had assigned seat on the bus. And I remember it was right behind the bus driver and the seat right behind him, or the seat right across from the, the bus driver's seat. His name was Jack Scudder, and even though we were in the side seating all the time, I mean, I don't think it ever end, ended until, uh, well, I'll get to that, until we were separated. But we had a side seating, and we, it still didn't deter us from screwing around and playing around, like we rough horsed, rough horsed with each other and rough housed. And uh, because of that, Jack Scudder, I remember, would turn around, you know, with his hand and just whop us both on the head with the handle of a screwdriver or any other tool that was in close pr proximity of where he was at while he was driving. Um, and he it just, it was what it was. And Andy and I didn't tell and we didn't make a big deal of it. We got lumps in our heads and it hurt. And we sort of quieted down for that ride. It didn't deter us for any other ride, but for that ride and we knew next time we were going to ride on the bus which was the next day or the way home it wasn't going to stop us from screwing around hence the reason we had a science seat all the time and hence the reason we got whopped on the head with a screwdriver handle or any other tool that was readily accessible to jack um, also along with this we were you know we were in elementary school together obviously and i remember we would run the halls and make noise and make rackets and uh, if if for some reason they allowed us to go to get a restroom uh you know break at the same time which i think happened a couple of times and they you know wised up to that but if i caught him in the hall he caught me in the hall because he was late to school and i was going to the bathroom or the restroom and then we just started screwing around or before class or after school, or before recess, after recess, before lunch, after lunch. Whenever we had that time, that little second of freedom we could grab and go, we grabbed it and we made it longer. We just screwed around rough horse, rough house, I should say. And we, I, we ran around the, the halls, and I remember Dr. K, I'll call him, was the principal at the time. Um, 
that is Dr. K, and I remember he would, when we wrote, ran by him, or if he happened to be walking out of the hall when we were running, he would just grab us by the back of the neck, the little hairs on the back of your neck, he would just grab them, and just boom, and just, just enough to jolt us and shock us. So we would just simmer down and settle down for that time being, and soon after, we got nailed again when he busted us running or, you know, roughhousing in the hallways. Um, and that was, Dr. that was Dr. K, as I said. And we spent a lot of time in his, the principal's office, in his office. And it wasn't, no, no, no harm done. And we didn't have any, you know, any gripes about him. We didn't, you know, not like him because of it. We knew we were in the wrong and he was, you know, doing corrective stuff. And it was what it was. That's just how we did it. And then uh, after a, a year or two, they, we got another, a different principal. We'll call him Mr. H. And uh, we spent a lot of time in his office, also the principal's office, a lot. Um, I, I could say it was a, a weekly thing, if not a, a multiple times a week thing. Same with Dr. Case. And there was no, I mean, we didn't have any gripes about him at all. We cordially talked and took our punishments, whatever they were, and it was that, and parents were called, or parents weren't called, or we were not allowed to go on recess, or we weren't allowed to do this or that, or we had to do this work, or we had to do that work. We had to, remember, pound out, you know, um, the chalkboard erasers. We had to go out and pound those out, and other kind of punishments, cleaning, that kind of stuff. And Dr. or Mr. H's office, we were in there a lot. And he was a principal we had had all the way through elementary school. And I remember, so first grade is when Andy and I met, early on in first grade, became instant best friends. And we had all this, you know, horse and round going on. And I remember it was second grade and only took them. Second grade, uh, the school separated Andy and I. I was no longer in the same wing of the schools as he was. He was in something called, uh, oh, I forget what they called it. It was something that was second and third grade. It was uh, some sort of test, you know, uh, educational thing they were doing. So he was put into that, and he was on a separate wing down multiple hallways away. So I didn't have the same lunch time as him, the same recess time as him. We barely overlapped on anything. So they separated us, but we still live in the same neighborhood. We still rode the same bus to and from school. So we were still able to do what we did then. So it, it really didn't deter us much. Um, there was a couple times there where I would try to stay back. You know, if I could just overlap and stay back, spend extra time in the restroom so that I came in later when he was going to his, uh, his lunch time or he would do the same thing, get out early. So we would try to see each other for a little bit there during the school period. Um, didn't happen uh, very often, but we tried. And then uh, from fourth grade to fifth grade, they had a, another program. Um, Andy was put in the caboose, they called that. And I was in the regular, regular, we'll call that, schooling. And uh, so I was in the regular population while he was in the caboose population. There was no, there was no, it wasn't for the, the challenged kids. None of those are just normal kids at normal levels, just a way to, for them to do some other challenge or trial thing for education. And uh, Andy just got stuck there because I got stuck here because we were separated again. So that's the way they separated us. Um, but again, we were always there before and after school on the bus ride, that kind of stuff. And uh, if any, it was any time that the school had, you know, when we had field trips, the whole school went, or a, a majority of the school went, or, or the whole grade went, then I ended up seeing Andy. And then it was, it was great. And not for anyone else, not for the teachers, I'm sure. We didn't, we didn't do any harm, we didn't hurt anyone, but. We just didn't listen that well because we didn't want to. Um, so anyways, the schools had separated us as far as that. And uh, I remember then Andy uh, had us separated until uh, after fifth grade. And then after fifth grade, before junior high, Andy moved. And he uh, moved to a different town. So because of this, he was at a different school. And also, 
back then when there was long distance. It was long distance for me to call him or him to call myself. So I call, I talked to my parents and it was, a, it was a high charge, but I would pay what I could with my allowance and he would call me when he could. It wasn't all the time because there was long distance charges and that kind of stuff, but we still try to keep in contact. We still saw each other uh, on birthdays usually or holidays as much as we could. We still saw each other then and talked as much as we could. Um, I remember any, any birthdays I had or any other thing going on. If there was some event, I always um, would, would plead with my parents to say, let's, let's go get Andy. I want Andy. I want Andy to stay the night. Let's go get Andy. And I wanted to be part of his life as much as I was before, even though that was not possible. I tried to keep that around. And I'm not sure if he did the same, but it felt that way because it, it still felt like we were just as close as we always were. Um, so uh, we, we kept in very close contact, like I had said. And as, you know, the junior high went and high school uh, years went on and he sort of went down his avenues, I went down mine, we still kept in contact, talked to each other, tried to meet up with each other here and there. And then uh, 2000, um, in 2000, I uh, had Andy in my wedding. He was a groomsman for my wedding. I was very pleased that he accepted and did that. Um, very happy about that. And, uh, and as that, the time after that went on, you know, as people grow, he, you know, had children, I had children, that kind of stuff, and we just tried to keep together, keep in contact as much as we could. My, the second born I, we had had, our second uh, child, I named him Andy, or Andrew, named after Andy. That's how much of a, a, a importance or important figure Andy was in my life. And uh, I just want to keep that around. I, not to honor him or anything like that. Maybe, maybe uh, subconsciously, but I just, he was that big of a deal and that big of an impression on my life that I want to name one of my children after him. Um, so it's like, we still kept together, I mean, got together, I should say, after that, and, and we just got along, and every time we'd get together, it was like no time had passed. We, we could not have talked for, let's say, a year, because he was doing his thing, I was doing my thing, and whatever, we just, and then we just got together, and it, it was like no time had passed. Nothing. It was like, we're just picking up right where we left off. Nothing was in between us, it was just us two. Um, and I, I, I know uh, every time we met, it was a huge embrace with a hug. That's how they started, it. like a huge man hug, if you want to call it that. But it was a huge man-sized hug, and there was always an endearing in there, always love, that love and that respect. Um, excuse me for a second. So I just, I'd like to say that Andy was also full of life, a kind caring person with an attitude to try uh, anything and everything. Um, and he was willing to lend a hand and open up his heart if he felt needed or, or would be uh, appreciated. Um, Andy survived by his mother and two children. <sighs> Andy, my childhood playmate, my partner in crime, my friend, my brother. Andy, I miss you, and you will always be on my mind. Excuse me. <clears throat> Things I've learned from Andy are don't let life pass you up. Live in the moment. You may not get a second chance. Take this one. Cherish everyone in your life. Excuse me. <clears throat> Things to think about. How can I be a positive difference in someone else's life? Life goes too fast. Appreciate every moment and every person that you have. <clears throat> About the set, I am thankful that I was able to be friends and share life with such an amazing 
and kind human being. I'm going to miss you, Andy. And I love you.